In this video, we are going to film a 30,000 gallon koi pond. In the next 10 days, I will help build this gigantic koi pond. This is going to be one of the largest private koi facilities in the United States. But there is one problem. The fish have to be moved to their new koi pond this week. Uh, before we can finish and put water in here, we need to get the fish. We need the fish in here really bad. But before we can do it, we have to get a design on here. So let's do it. Let's do it. So this is the temporary pond where the koi stay till the big pond is finished. And this is the 32,000 gallon koi pond. But before we reach the construction site, we travel from Tennessee to Nashville in four hours. Here, I have this left for you. It's not a problem. No, that's here. beer. No, I insist. I insist. Coke. Take it, take it, take it. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> Ready, boss? Today's, today's crazy. We're going to see the biggest pond I, I think I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, you ready? Ready. Let's roll. From the hotel, it's a 15 minute drive to the koi ponds. Hunter explains why the owners start this massive project. This pond was created because he had lost, uh, the, the client had lost quite a bit of very valuable large koi. I mean, most of these koi are like one meter. He asked me to build something that would make sure the water was always in great condition. His goal is to fill this up with very big jumbo koi. He doesn't really want anything small in there. So it's a show pond for him, but it's only for his purpose. So it's not for, uh, you know, entertaining, but it's for his enjoyment. And uh, everything is, is at the finishing stage. So I'm excited to show it to you. After traveling all the way from the Netherlands to see these koi ponds, we are finally at the construction site. This is Adam and he lives on the property and takes care of all the animals. You can call him also the zookeeper. Adam takes care of the koi fish and gives a small tour of the collection. These are the ones that were just making that sound. Oh wow. Great Argus. These are Saramas. They're meat eaters. Right here are uh, blue pigeons. Oh, wow, they're beautiful. This guy, he's really mean. <laughs> he's a Orion fireback. Hey, buddy. How are you doing today? Are you going to be nice? <laughs> I have never seen so many beautiful birds together. Back to the fish, because besides koi, there are many more fish species. This is... <laughs> <laughs> It's like 50 spring degrees water. in here, right? This is spring water, bro. Oh. The water is really cold. The owner has one of the largest fresh water springs in Tennessee. So, he can always give his koi fresh water. I like the uh, Deutsche Oshila. Really nice. And I, I really like the tension shop. So, they're a bit stressed out because this is not their, their home. I mean, hello, buddy. Don't say hello. <laughs> Dude, this is so cool. It's insane. When the pond is finished, back there, and the quarantine ponds are finished, those koi go there immediately. So this is just their current base where they stay. And there are two people taking care of all these fish full time. So every time that they live here on this farm. So I really hope the fish go as quick as possible to the, um, to the bigger pond. Then they will be able to grow a lot and enjoy their new life in the sun, their new big pond because it's big it's 32,000 gallons guys it's insane back to the koi ponds where Savannah and the construction crew are busy laying grass and building the pond it is so hot today that we need to cool down every half an hour hey what's up guys so today we're near Nashville Tennessee we're building this awesome koi facility this is like a dream facility and I'm gonna walk you around and show you all the different technical parts of it a little bit just a little synopsis so come on along with me we started this project back in October of 2021 and I'm gonna take you through and show you a little bit about it so here we have this beautiful curve which was a, a technical difficulty but we were able to solve that problem 
We made our own custom forms and it's 18 inch thick concrete. So we were able to do that. It's got seven return lines and we also feature this wall, which is, is, is meant to be beautiful and we are gonna solve that problem. So back here is where all the filtration will go. And this wall hides the filtration. In this area, we have built a pit to do all of the return or the, uh, the water that we don't need anymore. So it's discharge water, so this trench all of these filters, they, they work uh, and empty into this trench. So all of your backwashes and everything come through there. So we knew we needed something else to offset this uh, feel of so much concrete. So what we did was we put a garden here and, and then we, we featured grass, which I think was a really good change because it was originally gonna be all concrete. Uh, I think he was going for more of a, a, uh, an industrial approach to it just to maintain the health of the koi. But we were able to do this in a, in a way that did both of those things. So we're standing right now on the place where you, he can treat all of his koi. Right here are two beautiful 8,000 gallon each. Uh, these are quarantine tanks and the filtration sits on top of the grate. All of the uh, filtration is you know, changing automatically. These are, this is a flow through system as well. So uh, every day of the year, there's about 30 gallons every minute that's going into this system and coming out. It's a different design, but it's, it's able to be done here on this ranch. So in this very dangerous pit right here is where we can empty all of our bowls out whenever we're done uh, taking care of the fish, whether they need any treatment at all, we can dump it right into this trench. So that's for servicing. If he wants to go to a koi show, he's got it set up so that he can load everything right here and take it out the door. And it's really simple. Tavana arrives in time with the cold drinks. Not much later, Hunter decides to completely change the plans for the next few days. Dude, we cannot put water in this pond until this backsplash is done. I have no design. I have, I, I, on, the, on the back I've been going back and forth what I want to do, what I want to do, and I can't figure out what I want to do. And so I think we're gonna go tonight. Let's go, to, let's go find something tonight. And uh, we're gonna have her to help us. Let's go find something because I can't put, the, the, right now the koi are sitting and they need to be in very good, very good environment. And we cannot put them in here until we get that done. It's got to look good. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Right, buddy, no problem. Let's you got it. it. All right, guys, we're here. We're gonna try to pick up some some stone, make it look really good. Uh, we need to get those koi out of that trout house. So we're gonna try to do that and see if we can't finish this koi pond up in the next few days, which means we might be staying longer. Hunter goes looking for the decorative bricks for the wall. Subscribe to my channel now and see the continuation of this project in the next episode. Okay, I think we found this one. I think we're gonna go with this design. We're gonna see if they have enough. Looks like they might not, so let's check it out. Bueno, pero, uh, bueno,